Hi, I'm Harris Cohen. I'm professor and chairman of radiology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center in Memphis and radiologist in chief of the Labonte Children's Hospital also in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, this topic is neonatal neurosonography, the premature infant. In a limited amount of time, we will discuss a few methods in head ultrasound technique, review some normal intracranial ultrasound anatomy, note some current axioms of head ultrasound evaluation and diagnosis in the premature infant, discussing intracranial hemorrhage, IVH and IPH, and to a lesser extent, periventricular leukomalacia, PVL, and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, HIE. My history with head ultrasound began with uh, the emergence of head ultrasound in the United States. Um, I did my fellowship in 1980, where in the beginning of the year we were evaluating IVH by CAT scan. Two events occurred around that time that shifted the paradigm to ultrasound. Between 1979 and 1982, clinical radiologists were obtaining real-time ultrasound units, and in 1980, Ben Oredal and others discovered, in quotes, the anterior fontanelle as an ultrasound window. This resulted in ultrasound beginning to be used for bedside evaluation in my children's hospital um, for neonatal brains. Let me repeat that thing. By the middle of my fellowship in January 1981, ultrasound was being used for bedside evaluation of neonatal brains. Our first real-time unit looked very similar to what is shown here. Uh, note the flexible wire, but very small screen and wide linear array transducer used. We needed a transducer that could fit into the fontanelle and that could see deeper structures. A transducer I used for many years was this offset probe that could be placed in the uh, anterior fontanelle, and we could evaluate patients at the bedside within their isolate, within their controlled environment, which allowed analysis earlier than we would have with CT when we had to wait for the babies to be stabilized before they could days or weeks later go to CT for analysis.